Hello, everybody. Hope you're doing good. Now I gotta shake you around for a couple minutes at the beginning. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry about that. I had to check my dryer. I just shut it off. I'm not sure if you can hear what's going on back there, but my laundry room is right behind you. I hope you're all doing well. We have about one minute and then we'll get started. So good to see you all back again for another six weeks. So exciting. We got some core work, some balance work. Um, we're gonna work on our posture a little bit today, which is so important, especially these days when people sit on their phones a lot and look at the phone and their head comes forward and you start to round. You wanna correct that so you can stand tall. A much better way to live your life. You'll feel better, you'll have more energy. And a lot of these upper back and neck problems will go away. If you work on it enough. All right, I believe it's probably seven. Let's check it out. Yeah, it's seven o'clock. So today, um, let's start down on your mat. We're gonna start on your back. So let's lay back nice and safe. If you want blocks, you could have your blocks close or your blanket close. So let's take our arms down by our sides. So usually the first class I always go over, just in case we have any new members. When you're laying on the mat and we're doing any core work, we want a nice neutral spine. So we don't want any arches in your back. So for example, if your back naturally arches and you have a big curve when you lay down, we want to try to slowly correct that. That will also move all the way up your spine and affect your upper back too. So let's just take a couple tilts here. So imagine your pelvis being brought to the ceiling as you press your lower back down. And then we're going to make that arch a little bigger by pressing our pelvis down into the mat. So glutes are down. Now we do have that arch in our back. You might be able to take your hands underneath that arch. All right, let's do that a few times. So after we take that an anterior tilt and posterior tilt, we wanna find that mid ground. So right in the middle, so we're not forcing anything, but that's where we're gonna turn your abdominals on, turn your glutes on and just keep that nice long spine all the way down to that lumbar spine. Now from there, let's bring our knees into our chest and start to rock. So I want you to try to be aware of that throughout our practice today. And let's take circles here to warm up. Just give that lower back a nice massage here. Let's circle in the opposite direction if you haven't already. Just trying to work out all the kinks here little by little. And let's pull the right knee in, extending the left leg. Inhale and exhale as you switch. We're pulling that knee in a little closer. As you extend the leg out, if you're feeling any lower back pain, just bring those legs a little higher. We're pointing the toes. Good. Good. 
And remember that ujjayi breath. So for that breath, we are inhaling and allowing the stomach to rise, which we will do now. So let's place the soles of our feet on the mat and pull the heels into your hips. Remember the lower back is down. So take those tilts if you need to remind yourself of exactly where you should be. We're squeezing your abs. From here, I want you to place one hand on your belly. We're gonna take a big inhale. Hold for three, two, one, and then exhale. So we're actually opening up your mouth to exhale. We're letting out all the air. Now this time when you breathe, I want you to take a deep breath, but allow that stomach to rise. So notice the difference. So inhale, fill up, and when we're at the top, we're gonna hold three, two, one, now exhale. Let's try it again. Filling up, let's hold, and exhale. Good. Now let's place our hands right by our side and starting to work on the breath and adding the breath to our movement. We're going to inhale as we do bridge. So your bridge, we take that pelvic tilt. So anterior tilt up to the ceiling. As you do, we're gonna peel each vertebrae off of the mat and extend the hips to the top. We're breathing in. As we exhale, we lay each vertebrae on the mat, starting with our cervical spine or the upper part of your back, coming all the way down to that lumbar. All right, let's try it again. Big inhale. And if you have to remind yourself, you can put your hand on your belly. And exhale. And let's try one more inhale. And exhale. And a little rotation here. Let's put our arms out in a goal post, which means that our elbows are bent, they're right across from our shoulders. Palms are up to the ceiling and the hands are right above the elbows. So your head is nice and relaxed. We're crawling our feet to the outer edges of our mat and allowing the knees to drop from the right to the left. You can really stay on either side as long as you want, just so we're really warming up both sides. Both shoulders are down, we're still breathing. I like to exhale when I feel the work. So when you feel the stretch, exhale, so when the knees drop to the side. Inhale in the middle, and exhale on the side. And let's try one more. Good, and let's pull the knees into your chest. Just start to rock again. So let's add a little ab into our stretches here in our warm up. We're gonna take your chin and tuck it to your chest. Now this sometimes is not the most comfortable position for everyone. So I want you to think about maybe keeping not an apple, but maybe half of an apple between your chin and your chest. You're trying to keep it there. That's where your head should be. We're not here where you're jutting your neck up toward the ceiling. That's pretty rough on your neck muscles. So we're gonna tuck here. If this is still not comfortable, I want you to take your hands and tuck them behind your head. If you can stay here, we're gonna take that right knee and pull it in. The left leg is coming straight out. We're pressing your lower back into your mat. And then we're switching sides, pulling that knee a little closer. If that lower back is stressed, we're bringing the legs up a little further, squeezing the belly button to the spine a little more. If your hands are behind your head, you're just switching the legs. Bringing one in and then the other one in. 
working those abdominals. We're really focusing on that tight squeeze. Anytime you work your abs, anytime you do a workout in the gym or at home, just make sure you're squeezing those abs. If you're tight in your core, the rest of your workout will be tight and worth it for sure. Always have good posture. You know, I'm talking away and we're still doing these. I didn't forget about you, I promise. If you need a break, always take that break and then come back when you're ready. You only have four more of these. Four, three, two, and one. Beautiful, let's rest our head back. Rock side to side. Those were wonderful. Those are just the beginning. So let's come up to hands and knees. So your hands will place right under your shoulders, your knees will place under your hips. We're flipping our feet so the tops of your feet are on the mat. Let's work through the wrists here and just do a few circles. So the whole body circles in both directions. Now remember what we talked about on the mat. So we talked about a nice long slide. The same thing goes for our tabletop position here. So you don't want too much of an arch in your back. You don't want a round in your back. If I laid a PVC pipe on your head, it should stay from your head to your tailbone. So the way we do this is we're gonna take your shoulder blades, open them up and then squeeze together. So protract and retract. And again, just as we were doing with our pelvis on the mat, we're going to do here with our scapula. We're going to find that midpoint and stay right there. So our spine is long. We're lengthening through the neck and our gaze is down at the mat. Now do the same with your lower back. Arch and round, arch and round and find that midpoint. Now the abs are engaged, so pull them in nice and tight here. We're gonna work on back strength and your back is so important for your core strength. You have to have a strong back to have a strong belly, a strong belly to have a strong back. They work together. So we're gonna crawl that right hand out in front. Let's crawl and reach. Now keep that perfect, long spine as we add the opposite leg. So if your right arm is forward, you're taking your left leg straight back. Now the key here is to make sure you're staying in this position and when you reach out, and I'll show you from this position, when you reach out, that this hip is not out. You wanna keep that hip right behind the shoulder so you have a nice long line. Good, keep it here. Your shoulders and your hips are square to the mat. Now let's take that back foot and flex it like you're pressing it against a wall behind you. That knee is facing the mat. Good, let's drop down, shake it out a little, and crawl the left hand out. So the left hand crawls out, keep that nice, long, strong spine. Take the right leg back. So if it's the left arm, it's the right leg, we're squeezing your glutes, long spine looking down at your mat. So we're not looking down at your feet unless you wanna check real quick, make sure that hip isn't sticking out, shoulders and your hips are square, awesome job, let's drop down. All right, let's start to warm up. So let's settle back. And we are in child's pose. So your knees are out, your toes are touching. We're gonna move from our child's pose to our strong tabletop. Settle back and we're gonna add the breathing. Inhale forward, exhale back. Your breath is audible. You should be able to hear yourself breathe. Even if there's someone else in the room, that's okay. They can hear you breathe. Maybe it will make them breathe a little more. <laughs> they can think about their breathing too. From there, we're gonna settle back to your child's pose. Exhale here, inhale when you come up, exhale, drop the belly down to the mat. Hands under the shoulders and let's lift in Cobra. So 
We're lifting slowly, keeping the hips on the mat, and we exhale as we lower. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Good. Inhale. And exhale. Let's meet in our first downward dog of the evening. So in downward dog, if this is bothering you at all, if your wrists are hurting, if this is too much of a stretch, you can hold this position with your knees bent and lift your hips a little higher, start to press the heels down, or maybe go from bent to pressing the heels down. You can also paddle if that feels good, just move your hips around. If it's still too much of a stretch, just grab a chair. You're gonna put the chair in front of you and stretch your legs back behind you and press the heels in, maybe bend the knees a few times. That's a way to start. Also, if you have a little step like they used to use in the 80s for step class and you had some risers on it, it was a little higher, you can put your hands on there or use your steps walking up um, to your second floor. You could use that too. I know you've been in downward dog for a while. Good job. <laughs> now let's take your right foot through. So we're going to take it into the middle of the hands. Good. Now your chest is coming up. We're keeping that nice tilt in your pelvis. So no arch in your back. Start to maybe bounce if that feels good, of course. And let's take that leg back and the left leg forward. The pulse here. Good. Lift the chest again and again. I think last week we had a question about bringing the legs through. Funny, my blocks are gone. Huh, strange. Anyway, if you have yoga blocks, you could grab them and put them right under your hands right here. And then you can move freely maybe a little more freely. Now just watch because if the yoga blocks are standing tall and the narrow edge is on the mat, you might need a little more balance in those wrists, which you, you might wanna watch. Or you put the blocks flat on the mat. It might be a little lower for you, but it will be a little more, more stable. All right, let's bring that right leg up to meet the left. In the front of your mat, we're gonna hinge, lift, inhale. Hands to your heart. Let's bow forward and relax the head and neck. Take the hands down, shake the head back and forth. Shake it up and down. Loosen all those muscles where we keep that stress. Good. Let's hinge from your hips. We're lifting those arms again. We're inhaling. And hands come down to your heart. Wonderful job. Now relax those shoulders. Now here too, I want you to watch if you have a nice arch in your back. You wanna take that arch out and have a nice long spine. So squeeze your glutes, squeeze your abs, take that tilt forward. It's not a tuck, it's just a little tilt. Keep those hands right on your heart. We're gonna press the hands together, take them overhead and allow that chin to look up at the ceiling. As we do, we're still keeping that heavy tailbone. Relax the shoulders. There's a space in between your ears and your shoulders. We're keeping it there. Now, exhale. We're going to bring the arms down as you do your opening your chest. Keep the chin up. Good. Now, exhale. We're bending our knees, taking our hips to the back, pressing the tops of our hands together. Rounding through the spine now, and let's push through the heels. Inhale, take the arms behind us, lift the chin, maybe take a little more of an arch in the back. Nothing crazy. Exhale, press forward. Inhale. Remember, you can take these faster or slower than I am. Just keep your body controlled. Make sure your breathing is controlled. You start to take it too fast and you're breathing. You could get a little dizzy here, especially because the head is going up and down. So just take it a little slow. Good. Now we, we just hang out here. 
take the shoulders and allow them to melt down the back as you interlace the fingers together, if you can. If not, pretend there's a large ball behind your back or holding on to it. If the hands can clasp, I want you to press them down toward the floor, making that space between your ears and your shoulders a little bigger. Good, tilt the chin up. And let's take the chin to your chest. Separate the feet, take them hip width apart. We're bending forward. So either with the ball behind your back or interlaced fingers, we're dropping your chest. So this way we're either pressing your arms to the back of the room or up to the ceiling. Allow the head to relax. Now using the arms first, lifting up with the arms, good. Let's release. Feeling good now. Inhale here. Let's exhale. Forward fold. We're taking the right foot back. Good. Now we're in this low lunge again. If you have those blocks, use them. If you need your chair, you can use that too. Let's switch and take the left leg back into downward dog, the right leg forward. Awesome. A little pulse. And let's talk about our downward dog. Downward dog, let's go back into it. So with your downward dog, your goal eventually is to get those hips a little higher, your ears right in between your arms and your legs with just a slight bend in the knee. But let's try it here and rock back and forth. And this is definitely upper body strength, but it's, it's full body. So maybe even try to take the weight from your legs into your hands and take the weight from your hands into your legs. So just slowly rocking back and forth. Good. Awesome. Let's try it one more time. All right, back in your downward dog. Let's take the right foot forward. From there, we're coming up in a crescent lunge. So the back heel is up. The arms are up over your head and they're right by your ears. So nice and strong with the arms. We're trying to take them closer to the head so they're not out in a Y. They're more in an I. So you're making your body into an I here. Good, keep that back heel off of the mat. And let's dive forward, frame the right foot, take the right foot back, left foot forward. Lifting up from here, straighten those arms. But think about whenever we pulled the shoulders down your back, so we're melting those shoulders down. That's what I want you to do with your shoulders now. So they're still over your head. Keep in mind that this knee is directly over the ankle. That back heel is still up. Frame the foot, let's come down. Back to your dog, down or dog. Right foot in front. Crescent lunge. We're gonna take these a few times and a little faster here. So if you can keep up with me, great. If you can't, just take it at your pace, please. You will get stronger that way. I'd much rather you take it at your pace than be falling all over the place. Just take it nice and safe, all right? Left foot is back, right foot is forward. Back up. See, even I fall. <laughs> take it up. Good, relax their shoulders, frame that foot. And the left foot comes forward. Crescent lunge. Anybody that thinks that crescent lunge is easy, they're not doing it right. Now, let's try your balance and put your arms by your side. We're gonna take that back leg and bring it to the front. Good. Now, take the left foot now, bring it to the back. That heel is up, arms come over your head. Drop the arms, left foot comes up, right foot comes back. So it's just like we're doing reverse lunges here. I'm gonna reverse lunge in yoga. So we're definitely working those legs. Arms back down, right foot forward, 
Left foot back, arms up. Good, drop the arms. Let me take that foot forward. Shake it out a little bit. Something weird on my screen here. I know I'm going to be sorry if I try to get rid of this. I don't think you can see it, but okay, we're good. All right, so we're still in front of our mat. We're inhaling here. Let's exhale and do our fold. So we're in our forward fold. We're going to take your right foot back first. Come up to your crescent lunge. So arms overhead, maybe try to take that crescent lunge to another level. If you can lower down a bit, straighten that back leg. Good. Now, shoulders melt down your back, remember? Arms by your ears. And let's twist to the right. So if your right leg is back, you're twisting to the right. Yep, arms are out straight. It's like you could serve two platters, maybe holding them right now. Awesome. Now we're gonna flip the front arm so that the palm is facing upward. Good, we're gonna work through the rib cage here. Just reach over that bent leg. Nice, and stay here, stay here. Good, let's lift back up. Cartwheel the arms on either side of the left foot. Bring the right foot forward and hinge from the hips, inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Left foot goes back, we have our crescent lunge. Relax the shoulders right away. Get down a little lower if you're able to. If not, that's fine too. Just keep the knee over the ankle. We shouldn't be here. Notice how my knee is not over top of that ankle. That's going to put a great big stress on that knee joint. We don't want that. Now we're twisting. So if your left leg is back, you're twisting to the left. Arms are straight out and strong. Good. Shoulders are still relaxed. We're gonna flip that front palm and through the rib cage, we are reaching forward. Look over the hand. Good, 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 keep breathing. Let's release, cartwheel the hands, pivot on the back foot and let's take that one forward, hinge from your hips. Good, hands to your heart. We're gonna press all 10 toes into your mat. Squeeze the muscles in your legs, your glutes. Long spine with our shoulders melted down our back. Our breathing is right on point. Now, when we're in this restful position or mountain pose, I want you to take any thoughts that are coming to your mind and just brush them to the side. You're gonna try not to think about anything but what you're doing right now. So let's take an inhale, exhale, fold forward from the hips. We're taking that right foot back into your crescent lunge. Reach up, shoulders are down. Pelvic tilt forward. We're gonna tilt forward a little more than we were before so we can feel this hip flexor in the right leg. If that's the one that's back right now. Good, straighten that back leg a little more. And let's twist to the right in your warrior two. Warrior two is strong. Arms are strong. Good, keep it going. That knee is stacked over the ankle. We're gonna flip the front palm, work through the rib cage. Lean forward, look over that hand. Nice. Now we're gonna lay that arm on the front leg with the palm up and bring the other arm overhead. This is side angle pose. So from here, you should have from your fingertips down to your foot, a nice long line. If this is rough on your shoulder, you're keeping your hand right on your hip. If you've had so shoulder surgery, or your shoulders just may be sore at the moment. If you'd like to incorporate your neck muscles a little, we're taking your gaze up to the ceiling. Nice job. 
Now we're gonna drop both hands, frame the left foot, pivot on the right, bring the right foot forward, inhale, exhale, forward and forward. And we're bringing the left leg back into your crescent lunge. Good form here, check that knee. I'm gonna straighten the back leg and tilt forward a little more. Feel that hip flexor, oh yeah. You feel that kick in immediately, squeeze those glutes. We're gonna take that twist to the left, arms come out in that strong warrior too, because we're all warriors. Flip the front palm, reach through the rib cage. Hold there. Look over that hand. Beautiful, let's drop that arm down to the right leg, reaching the other arm overhead and looking past the arm if you can. Or remember, keeping that arm down if there's any pain in that shoulder. Good. Now let's face forward, frame the foot, pivot on the back foot, take it forward. Hinge from your hips, awesome job. Inhale, hands come down. Deep breaths here, we're gonna add on to that. You're all doing an amazing job. Let's inhale, exhale, hinge from your hips. Hands come down, the right foot is back into your crescent lunge, let's lift up. Arms by your ears, melt those shoulders down your back. Tilt forward a little, squeeze your glutes a little more and straighten that back leg, inch it back a little more so you can get lower. Twist into warrior two, you got it. Nice, flip the front palm, reach forward through that rib cage. Wonderful, really split yourself apart here. And then lay it on the leg, reach the arm over, look up at the ceiling, take those modifications if you need them. Good, now we're placing our hands to the inside of the left foot. So we're taking it down here, crawling our hands to the middle of the feet. Both toes now are forward, heels are back, relax your head down, grab the shins, the ankles, or if you can't get down that low, we're holding on to a chair in front. You can also hold on to your blocks in front. Just allow the head to relax. Good, and let's crawl the hands back toward the left foot. We're bringing the right foot to the front. Hinge and lift and let's inhale, pelvic tilt. Maybe take a slight back bend, but you have that heavy tailbone. Exhale, forward fold, and we're taking the left leg back. Crescent lunge, arms up, melt the shoulders, tilt forward, get lower, straighten the back leg. There's a lot going on here, right? A lot to think about. Twist to the left, arms straight out. Warrior two, flip the front palm, reach through the rib cage. Look over that hand. Let's drop the arm to the knee. Reach the arm overhead. Good. We're creating a lot of heat now. You can look past the arm if that feels good. Then the hands come down to the inside of the right foot. We're gonna crawl the hands to the middle of the feet. Toes forward, heels back. Relax in this stretch and maybe crawl the hands back behind you. Just make sure your head's relaxed. You can even shake your head around. Just grab that stretch and you can even put your hands on your legs wherever you feel good here. Hands on the blocks, on the chair, wherever your body allows you to stretch. And let's walk the hands back toward the right foot. Take the back foot and place it next to the right. Hinge from the hips, inhale. 
hands in prayer. Let's go right into our last flow, adding on. So let's inhale, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, right foot is back. We're gonna go a little faster, but you got this now. Crescent lunge, warrior two. Flip the palm, reach through the rib cage. Drop down, side angle. The hands to the inside of the left foot. And we crawl to the middle of the, the feet, toes forward, heels back, relax your head. We're crawling on this side, back toward the front foot. So mine's the left foot. We're gonna take your back leg and bring it up three quarters of the way. Straighten the front knee and bring your nose down to that knee. This is our pyramid pose. If you're not comfortable here, definitely grab a chair to hold on to, or the blocks are fine too. We're just trying to straighten this leg as much as you can without locking it out. You definitely don't wanna lock. Now mine is, is very bent and that's all right. I still feel a heck of a stretch in there. All right, let's bend the front knee and we're bringing the right foot up to meet the left. Bend the knees, hinge from the hips, lift me up. Exhale, we're flying forward. We're gonna take that left foot back, crescent lunge. Good. Warrior two. Put the palm through the ribs, reach. Side angle. Hands to the inside of the right foot, crawling to the middle, crawling to the back. And start to take the hands a little closer to the right foot. And we're gonna bring the back foot up about three quarters of the way, straightening the right knee and bringing your nose as close to the knee as possible. Good, just breathe here. Wonderful job. Bend the front knee. Let's bring that foot forward. Push through the heels. Lift up. Good. Inhale. <sighs> Wonderful. Now we're going to incorporate a little bit of balance here. So for the balance, we're gonna use our legs and lift them through the flow and add some things on. So let's take it really slow. You know the flow, but we're gonna add a little bit to that. So let's inhale, exhale, fold forward. Inhale, the right foot goes back into that crescent lunge. So we're lifting here, arms come up overhead. Think about everything we talked about, the eye, shoulders mouth down. Pelvic tilt forward, nice long leg in the back, knee over the ankle. Now we're gonna fly forward. So you're gonna frame your left foot with your hands and bring your right leg up off of the mat. So squeeze your stomach, bring that right leg up. Good, bring it up as high as you can. Bring it back down to that crescent lunge, arms overhead into warrior two. Wonderful, lean forward, side angle. Good, look past that arm, open the chest. Squeeze your belly again. Now we're gonna go into a balancing half moon from here. So we're gonna take the hand that is laying on the leg, we're gonna take it right in front of the left foot. Both hands are coming down, that leg's coming up again. And the right arm's coming up in the air. Good job. Hold and squeeze. Let's come back to our side angle. And take the hands to the inside of the left foot. Crawl to the middle of the feet. Right in between, head is relaxed. Grab onto the ankles or the shins. Crawl forward toward the left foot, and we're going to take the back foot 
three quarters of the way in, drop the head down. Walk the hands forward from here, squeeze the abs and bring that right leg back up in the air. Both hands are on your mat. From here, the leg stays up and we're gonna try to take the hands off of the mat and come to a standing position. How'd it go? All right, let's try it on the other side. Inhale, just take them slow. Exhale, fold forward. We're taking the left leg back into your crescent lunge. Raise up, be strong. Now the hands are gonna frame the foot. We're squeezing our belly. And bring that back leg up off the mat. Good. Now if this is hurting your back, Squeeze your belly a little tighter. You don't have to lift your leg that high. It can be down here, that's fine. Remember that nice long spine, you wanna keep it. Good, let's plant it back down into your crescent lunge and we're gonna twist right into warrior two. Flip the palm, reach forward. Now from here, we're gonna drop the hand right into our balancing half moon. So let's lift up. Squeeze the belly tighter. And come into our side angle pose. Woo, are you following like I am? <laughs> right here, reach. Take the hands to the inside of the right foot and crawl to the middle. Crawl the hands behind you or use the blocks, whatever you need to do, relax your head. Crawl the hands back toward the right foot. We're moving that back foot up three quarters, head and down toward the knee. Feel that great stretch through the back of that right leg. Make sure all four corners of that right foot are down. And let's crawl the hands forward, bringing that back leg up. We're lifting back up to a standing position. Try to go slow. Peel those fingertips off of the ground. Keep the leg up. We're coming back to your standing position, which I did so beautifully. <laughs> Falling all over the place tonight. All right, how did you like that? Adding that all in there. That was awesome. Good job, everybody. Let's inhale and exhale, fold forward. Now we're gonna bend the knees and sit any way that you're comfortable. And so you can sit with a blanket under your hips. If you find that you're sitting on the mat and you are rounded, tuck that blanket under your hips. It's really gonna do wonders for your spine and your back. We're gonna take the same stretch we did standing, but sitting. So we're rounding through your back. We're exhaling, pressing the tops of the hands together. Chin comes to chest. Inhale, arch the back, opening the chest, opening the lungs, taking the palms out with the thumbs up. Exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Good, and let's try boat pose tonight. This is a lot of balance, but it's also a lot of core. So we're gonna take the hands and place them behind the knees. So the regression on this would be to keep your hands behind your knees, sit tall, and if this is enough for you, you stay here. If you'd like to try to peel those legs up off of the mat, maybe do one at a time. Your goal is keeping the chest up and not starting to slouch around through the back. So stay here and then add the left leg. And maybe tap. Tap one, tap two. Do it like that. Well, I've got a little crampage going on. I know I didn't drink my water today, so. All right, if you're here and you're ready and I cannot point my toes right now, so I'm gonna act activate them and pull them back because cramps feel so much better when you're flexed. We're gonna let go with the arms. So they're up in the air, your chest is still up. Now this is great, if you can allow the arms to unrelease, that's even a word, 
and your back is not rounded. Now, if you're here and you start to round, notice that and put one hand behind and then switch. That way you can pull the knees in and lift the chest up. This is where you wanna be when you let go with the hands, nice and tall. Now, if you're even more advanced, or you wanna try it with your hands behind your legs and straightening the legs, you can definitely do it like that. Let go with the arms, go for it, it's awesome. All right, now we're gonna tap and lift, everybody, eight times. Keep your belly tight, your chest up, hands behind your knees. Good, four more times, four, three, two, now this last one we're holding up. So squeeze and hold. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and oh yeah, you got it. All right, let's take those hands down, shift the hips to the front, pull the knees in, and let's rock. <sighs> Wonderful job tonight. We worked on our core, we worked on our balance, we did a flow. A little more balance on the mat tonight. And we definitely worked on that posture. So think about that even later after class, maybe tonight, tomorrow, if you're at work or whatever you're doing during the day. And just think about keeping that tailbone nice and long. So not necessarily tilted, but just a nice long tailbone. And then that will definitely promote good posture in your upper back too. Now let's just pull the right knee in toward you. We're gonna take the left leg and lay it on the mat, it's straight out. Tuck that foot to the inside of the left leg. Allow that knee to drop to the left side and reach your right arm back. And when you reach the right arm back, we're trying to look back at the hand. Nice job, let's release. Straighten the right leg out. Take the left knee in and tuck that left foot to the inside of the right leg. Drop it and reach that left arm back. Maybe taking that gaze and looking back at that hand. Oh, that stretch feels amazing. Still breathing. Uh, let's release. We're going to take both legs straight out, arms by our side, and tuck the shoulders underneath, allowing the head to drop back. And we are arching here. It's a safe arch. Mm, let's release. All right. Now let's separate your feet, allowing the toes to fall to the side and arms pull away from the body with the palms up. Just a few restful breaths here. And if time allows, I invite you to stay on your mat and relax. If not, let's wiggle our fingers and our toes and start to move our arms and our legs. Let's roll on the right side, nice and slow. And come up to a seated position. 
Thank you so much for the chance to try new things this evening and for another six weeks together. And I will definitely see you next Tuesday. Let's take a deep breath to end. Namaste. The light in me honors the light in each and every one of you. Thank you all. If anyone has any ideas on what they'd like to work on next week, I'm totally here for you. We can definitely do it. Uh, I have some ideas. So next week, maybe bring a hand towel to class. Um, we're going to work on some core with that and some slides. And if you're working on carpeting, if you have carpeting slides or carpet slides, that would be great. If not, that's fine too. Um, you still need the hand towel because we're going to use that. But I hope you all have an awesome week and I hope that that made your week better. <laughs> Thank you all so much. I'll see you next week at seven. Same link. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Susan. I'm glad you liked it. Thanks, Carolyn. Glad to see you ladies back. I love it. Thanks, everybody. See you next week. Bye.